Hello everyone, this is Hanning Tian. Uh, in this video, we will learn chapter 6.2, sum and difference formulas. Uh, here are objectives. Mm, for this one, this is an example. Let's decide this one is true or false. Sine 60 degrees equals sine 30 degrees plus sine 30 degrees. We have learned that, let's say, uh, left-hand side equals sine uh, 60 degrees, that's square root of three over two. Right-hand side, that's sine 30, that's one half, plus sine 30 is one half, equals one. So left hand side is not equal to our uh, right hand side. That means this is false. What's the meaning of this counter example? That means even we have, uh, we know that sine 60 equals sine 30 plus 30, but it doesn't, uh, I can't say that, uh, I can't say that, oh, <laughs> how to write it. So I can't say this one equals sine 30 degrees plus sine 30 degrees. This is false because we already proved that. They are not equal. That means if I have a, a function which is sine alpha plus beta, I can't say that this one equals sine alpha plus sine beta. I can't say this if uh, this one is true all the time. But some students say if beta is zero, so beta is zero and uh, this equation, this one equals sine alpha and sine alpha plus beta is zero. That's true because sine alpha equals sine alpha. But for example, suppose beta is not zero. So this one, we can't say for sure that this expression equals this expression. So if I want to uh, find the sine alpha plus beta, we need to use some special formulas. Let's clean this area. Let's move on to see next part. We need to use uh, the formulas in this table to find the sign, uh, the sum and the subtraction of two angles. For example, the sign formulas, sine u plus v equals sine u cosine v plus cosine u sine v. Uh, please pause the video and memorize or copy down all of these formulas. For sine u minus v equals sine u cosine v minus cosine u sine v. Look, for the sine functions, sine cosine, cosine sine, sine cosine, cosine sine. Only difference is here I have plus and here is plus. Here's minus, here's minus. How about cosine? Cosine u plus v equals cosine u cosine v minus sine u sine v. Cosine u minus v equals cosine u cosine v plus sine u sine v. That means the first two terms, uh, first two terms, uh, they are all cosine, 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 cosine. And the uh, uh, second terms, they are sine, 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 sine. And remember, if cosine is plus, here is minus. If cosine here is minus, here is plus. For the tangent formulas, if I have tangent u plus v, that equals tangent u plus tangent v. Uh, divided by one minus tangent u tangent v. 
tangent u minus v equals tangent u minus tangent v divided by one plus tangent u times tangent v. So look at here, if here is plus, the numerator is plus. If here is minus, numerator is minus. The bottom one, if it's plus, the bottom is minus. If here is minus, the denominator is plus. Okay, let's see. For some special uh, angles like uh, 15 degrees, that's equals 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Um, because we don't know what is sine 15 degrees, but we have learned the sine 45 and the sine 30 or cosine 45, cosine 30 degrees. So I can convert the sine 40, 15 degrees into sine 45 degrees minus 30 degrees and then come to the formula part. So 45 minus 30 degrees equals sine 45 degrees times cosine 30 degrees minus cosine 45 degrees times sine uh, 30 degrees. So if we have this expression, we can find um, the sine 15 degrees because we have no the special angles trig, func uh, trig uh, functions values. And um, 105 degrees, this equals uh, 135 degrees minus 13, uh, 30 degrees. <clears throat> because these two are special angles for us. So some students said, said uh, 135 is not that uh, special, like uh, 30, 45, and 60. But uh, do you still remember what have learned that uh, the reference angle? 135 is here in the second quadrant. It's from here to here. The reference angle is 45. So if I want to see sine uh, 135, use the reference angle that in the second quadrant, sine is positive. So this one equals sine of its reference angle, which is sine 45. So if I have uh, 105 degrees, this one, we can use 135 minus uh, uh, 30 degrees. So, uh, compute the sine, cosine, tangent 135 is easy for us because we have learned the reference angle. And for this one, 7 pi over 12, we haven't learned uh, sine, cosine, or tangent of this angle. We can split it into two parts. One is 3 pi over 12. Another angle is 4 pi over 12 because 7 pi equals 3 pi plus four pi. And then simplify these two fractions. We got four pi, oh sorry, pi over five over four, pi over three. And these two angles is easy for us to compute. Let's move on to see uh, examples. The first one, we are looking for cosine 15. Uh, <clears throat> so cosine 15 equals 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. So by using uh, the formula of cosine, let's see, so this one equals cosine 45 degrees, come back, 45 degrees times cosine 30 degrees. Since here is minus, we need to plus plus sine 45 degrees times sine 30 degrees. That's one plug in the value. Square root of two over two times cosine 30 degree is square root of three over two plus sine 45 is square root of two over two. And sine 30 degrees one half. This one is square root of two times square root of three is square root of six. And bottom is two times two is four, plus square root of two over four. This one bottom is four, 
the top is square root 6 plus square root 2. We can't simplify this anymore. So we just keep this. Oh, I just want them together. OK, this is the final answer for uh, cosine 15 degrees. <clears throat> Let's see, next one. Uh, we have sine. This is 11 pi over 12. Uh, we can split 11 pi over 12 into two parts. The first one is 3 pi over 12. Another one is 8 pi over 12. Because 3 pi over 12 equals uh, pi over 4. And uh, uh, 8 pi over 12, uh, that's 2 pi over 3. These two are specials for us. We can compute the value of sine, cosine, and tangent. So by using this way, actually, uh, I'm going to use two ways to solve this question. So um, the first way we want uh, this one, I split to the sine 11 pi over 12 into two angles. One is pi over four. Another one is two pi over three. And do you still remember the uh, formula of sine? That's sine pi over four times cosine two pi over three plus sine, sorry, cosine. <clears throat> cosine pi over four times sine two pi over three. And the sine pi over four is square root of two over two. And how about uh, cosine two pi over three? So in the uh, x, y plane, two pi over three is here. The reference angle should be pi minus two pi over three. So let's alpha is this reference angle equals, oh, sorry, equals pi minus 2 pi over 3. That's pi over 3. So alpha is pi over 3. The cosine in second quadrant is negative. So negative uh, pi over 3. That means negative cosine 60 degree pi over 3 or cosine pi over 3 plus cosine pi over 3, sorry, cosine pi over 4, square root of 2 over 2 times sine uh, 2 pi over 3, because we have learned the reference angle alpha is pi over 3. In the second quadrant, sine is positive. That means this one is sine pi over 3. Oh, I have why I have six here. I must uh, be careful here because reference angle alpha is pi over three. And then plug in the value of this. Bring down square root of two over two times negative um, cosine uh, pi over three. That's one half plus square root two over two. And sine pi over three is square root three over two. This one, the first one is bottom one is four. Top one is keep the ne negative sign here, square root two plus uh, square root six over four. And then sum up the tops, that's square root six minus square root two. So this is the answer for this one. Actually, we have another way to solve this, uh, this one. I need some space here. <clears throat> so way two. Uh, if we use a reference angle, so if I draw the graph here, 11 pi over 12 is the angle from the initial side and then go all the way counterclockwise I got here. What is the reference angle for 11 pi over 12? So I can use pi. So from here to here is pi. Pi minus 11 pi over 12. 
That means the reference angle alpha equals pi minus 11 pi over 12. That's pi over 12. Remember that pi over 12 is 15 degrees. Uh, that means, make it clean. That means uh, in the second quadrant, the sine is positive equals positive of sine alpha. That means sine 11 pi over 12 equals sine pi over 12. Remember this is positive because A, S, T, C, sine here is positive in the second quadrant. So this one, sorry, this one equals sine 45 my oh no 45 pi over four minus pi over six. Do you think the uh, 15 degree equals 45 degrees minus 30 degrees? Yes, because 45 degrees minus uh, 30 degrees is 15 degrees. And 45 degrees is pi over four. 30 degrees is pi over six. And then right now, let's split it. Split it because the smaller angle for us is easy to compute. If I have angle like a two pi over three, we need to decide the, the sign of the trig values. So this one, this expression equals sine pi over four times cosine pi over six, and then minus cosine pi over four times sine pi over six. And this one equals square root of two over two times uh, square root of three over two minus square root of two over two uh, times, this one is one half the square root of six over four minus square root of two over two. Sorry, or four, should be four. That's one square root of six minus square root of two over four. So you see, you have the same answer. You can choose whichever way, either way you like. So if you feel first one, uh, you feel it's easy for you, use the first of first way to solve. And if you feel second way using the reference angle way to solve is easy. So choose a second way and you get the same answer. Uh, let's move on to see next one. Let's see. Sine 25 degrees times cosine 35 degrees plus cosine 35 degrees times sine 25 degrees. Uh, for this one, you see 25, uh, 35, 35, 25. Do you still remember sine alpha plus beta equals sine alpha times cosine beta plus cosine alpha times sine beta? And here, let's 25 is alpha. So sine alpha times cosine beta sine alpha times cosine beta plus cosine uh, alpha it's the correct one let me see mm. i think this one is a wrong problem um I don't want you to solve this. I have a typo here. Actually, I want to, uh, here should be sine. Here should be cosine. Because the purpose of this question, I hope you to find this one equals uh, sine 25 degrees plus 35 degrees. This is the opposite way of using the sine formula because here is sine 25 degrees plus cosine 35 degrees. And by using this one, the next term must be cosine 25 degrees times 
sine uh, 35 degrees. And uh, then here a tricky part. If I have the sign at, at the beginning, I switch the position of these two. And uh, I get the same uh, result because A times B equals B times A. So here we have sine 35 degrees times cosine 25 degrees. That's equals to cosine 25. So I can write down this one into plus cosine 25 degrees times sine 35 degrees. And bring down the first term, which is sine 25 degrees, cosine 35 degrees. Is this looks like sine alpha times cosine, sine alpha, let's 25 is alpha, cosine beta, 35 is beta, plus cosine alpha times sine beta. Yeah, so this expression is the way here. So this one equals sine alpha plus sine beta. This one equals sine alpha plus beta. That means sine 25 degrees plus 35 degrees. That's sine 60 degrees. I'm sorry, I got a typo here. It confused you. So this one is sine 60 degrees equals square root of three over two. So this is a way by using the sine formula to find the result of this expression. If I don't correct it, look, the first term and second term, they are exactly the same. X equals two times sine 25 degrees times cosine 35 degrees because the first term and second terms, they are the same. We're gonna learn these in later uh, class. So this one, I got a typo. Uh, I will correct it in the uh, PowerPoint. Okay, let's move on to C. Find the exact value of uh, cosine alpha minus beta, given that sine alpha equals four over five, cosine beta equals negative five over eight for alpha in quadrant one. Uh, quadrant three and beta in quadrant uh, two. Beta is in quadrant two. So beta is here. Let's see. Cosine alpha minus beta. And uh, we have learned that. Uh, cosine beta, if I write down the formula here, cosine beta alpha minus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta plus uh, sine alpha times sine beta. So if I want to find the value of cosine alpha minus beta, we need to know these four functions value. So in the uh, question, they gave us sine alpha. So sine alpha is given and cosine beta is given, these two terms. We need to find the cosine alpha and the sine beta. Can we find the cosine alpha and sine beta? Let's see it. Uh, so let's find the cosine alpha first, cosine alpha equals what? So we have learned that sine alpha equals uh, y over r. So r is always positive. So we can assume r is five and uh, y is negative four. So y is negative four. Uh, erase this. So four, four alpha. So we know that y equals negative four and r equals five. Can you find the x? Yes, 
because we have learned that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So if I'm looking for x, x equals square root of uh, r squared minus y squared. And remember, alpha is in quadrant three. So it's here. The x value is positive or negative? It's negative. So let's plug in the r negative. Plug in the r is five. Five squared minus y squared is negative four squared. And we got negative three. Right now we have x, y, and r. That means we can find the cosine alpha. Cosine alpha equals negative three. That's x value over r. r is five. So we got uh, cosine alpha equals negative three over five. But we still need to find the sine beta. So for beta, so for the beta, beta is here. And the cosine beta equals uh, negative five over eight because we have learned cosine equals x over r. We can assume r is eight. X, x is negative five and uh, r is eight. Can we find the y? Yes, y by using this one. Actually, I don't need to copy, copy this. I just write down that square root of uh, r squared minus x squared and plug in the r and x value. And remember that one thing, beta is in quadrant two. That means y's value, they are all positive. So I didn't put a negative sign here. And then plug in the value of r, r is eight, eight squared minus x is negative five squared. That's uh, 64 minus 25. Uh, that squared was 39. Is that 39? Yeah, that's 39. <clears throat> so the y's value is square root of 39. Yeah. Okay. And then let's find, uh, I'm looking for sine beta. So sine beta equals y over r. That's square root of 39 over the r. r is, is eight. So we find the sine beta is square root of 39 over eight. And then we find all these uh, four trig functions value. Let's find the cosine alpha minus beta. So cosine, alpha minus beta equals cosine alpha times cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. And the cosine alpha is here is negative three over five. Uh, cosine beta, hmm, what is cosine beta? Okay, it's given, it's here. It's negative five over eight. And then plus sine alpha, sine alpha is given is negative four over five. Oh, we have so many negative numbers. Okay, let's see what is sine beta. Uh, sine beta is square root of square root of thirty nine over eight. And then do the computation. Positive, negative, negative is positive. Uh, five point uh, times eight. 40 and the top one three times five is 15 minus the bottom one is 40 top one is four times 39 i didn't do the consolation simplify the fraction because i know if they have same denominator they can uh, add or subtract so 15 minus four times square root of 39 over 40 degrees. So uh, that's the answer of this question. So first step, you need to remember how to uh, express this into cosine and sine uh, expression. 
and then find uh, all of these four values, plug it in the uh, plug it in the expression, we will find the value of cosine alpha minus beta. Okay, let's move on. Find the sine tangent, uh, inverse of tangent negative three over four. So remember one thing that the inverse function for the tangent is only in first quadrant and fourth quadrant in these two quadrant. So the angle, because the inverse of a trig function must be an angle, let's say this is alpha. The alpha must be here or here. So for example, let tangent, the inverse of tangent and three over four equals uh, alpha negative. Okay, so are we just uh, want to find, want to find sine alpha? Because alpha equals the inverse function of tangent uh, negative three over four. This is alpha. So I'm looking for sine alpha. So make sure this is the, the answer we are looking for equals what? So let's see what's the relationship between alpha and the negative three over four. So I can write it down in another way. Tangent alpha equals negative three over four. Since we have learned alpha should be here or here, and this is a negative. So it won't be here because we have learned A, S, T, C. Alpha, if in the first quadrant, tangent alpha is positive. So the alpha must be in the uh, fourth quadrant, it must be here. <clears throat> right? So that means, uh, okay, so do you still remember sine alpha equals y over r? If we can find that y and r, we can find the sine alpha. And here we have learned that sine alpha equals y over x. So can you by the relationship of these find the, the r's value? Of course. So let me erase this part. Find r. So r equals square root of uh, x squared plus y squared and plug in x and y's value. Uh, in this quadrant, the x always positive, y is always negative. That means the y we can assume is negative three and x positive value can be four. That means assume uh, x is four, that's four squared plus negative three squared. And uh, then we get five because R is the distance. Let's always be positive. And then sine alpha alpha equals Y over R. Y, what is the Y to still remember is negative three. And then uh, R is five. So the sine alpha is negative three over five. Is this what I'm looking for or uh, the expression here? Yes. So we got the answer of sine the inverse tangent to negative three over four is negative three over five. Uh, let's continue to see next one. Find the exact value of sine the inverse tangent to negative nine over 40 plus cosine, the inverse of cosine uh, eight over 17. And it seems like very hard because we have two um, inverse functions in the sine function. That means we can assume that, let the inverse of tangent 
negative 9 over 40 equals alpha. And let the cosine, the inverse of cosine, 8 over 17 over uh, equals beta. And then we know that sine alpha plus beta equals sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. So if I can find these four values, I just plug it in, I can find sine, sine alpha plus beta. And how to find sine alpha and um, actually four expressions. So for, by the given information here, if I can draw the picture here. So the sine, in the inverse, uh, function for the tangent, the angle must be in first one or fourth one, fourth quadrant. We can only find the angle in these two quadrant and it has the inverse tangent value. That means this is negative. It must be here. And then for cosine, inverse cosine function, we can only find, find the value from these two quadrant is in first and second quadrant. We have learned this in, I think that's chapter seven, uh, 5.7, the inverse functions. So we have learned STC, oh no, ASTC, ASTC, and this one is positive, that means Sine a uh, cosine function positive. The uh, the alpha oh the angle beta must be in the first quadrant. Why? Because I can only choose the beta this angle in first and second quadrant. Second quadrant will make the cosine negative. This is positive. That means it in the first quadrant. So this is beta. Okay. Okay, let's see, this is alpha. If I have this information, let's find sine alpha, cosine alpha, sine beta, and cosine beta. So for this one, we have we can convert it into the regular alpha equals negative nine over forty. And this one, uh tangent equals y over x. And uh, we know that in the fourth quadrant, x is always positive. So x is 40, assume it's 40. And the uh, y's value is negative, equals negative nine. Let's find the y, oh, and let's find the r, sorry. r equals square root of, <coughs> <clears throat> x squared plus y squared. This one, use your calculator you got. I think it's 491. 81, sorry. No, not this small. It's the wrong answer. Should be 1681. So 1681, that's square root of 41. I'm not sure. So we can use the um, calculator. No, come back. No, let me grab a calculator to see what is the answer. One six eighty one. Square root it. Oh, yes, it's square root of 41. R is square root of 41. And uh, this is for alpha. Um, so sine alpha equals y over r. Y is negative 9 over square root of 41. And the cosine alpha 
equals x over r. Uh, x here is 40 over, oh, sorry, here. It's not square root of 41, just a 41. Forty one. Forty one. Okay, we have the sine alpha and the cosine alpha. Uh, let's see the uh, the beta part because from here we find the, the alpha. Uh, how about the beta? Since we have learned cosine, the inverse of cosine eight over seventeen is beta. Let's see. That means cosine beta equals eight over 17. And we have learned cosine is y over uh, r. We can assume uh, eight is y, uh, r is 17. So let's find the x. The x equals r squared minus uh, y squared equals, so let's, y equals 8, r equals 17. And uh, plug it in the expression here. Why I didn't put a positive or negative sign here? Because we have, uh, uh, we have learned that uh, the beta must be the, in the first quadrant. That means cosine and sine beta, they are all positive. So that's the reason I didn't put a negative sign there. So let's continue. Square root of r squared, that's 17 squared minus eight squared. So use your calculator to find uh, this one. That's, is that 15? Let's see, uh, 17 squared, that's um, 289 minus 64. That's 225. The square root of 225 and uh, square rooted, that's 15. So I have x and y and r's value. We can find sine, sine beta. Sine beta equals y over r. That's, hmm? oh my goodness, what I'm doing here. Sorry, it's x. x. Oh no, because cosine beta is x over r. And, uh, we can let x equal eight. So we are looking for y. Even the answer should be this, the right, should be correct. But uh, we must uh, be careful x. So the y is 15. So let's insert 15 in the expression here in the y's value. So it's 15 over r, r is 17. Right now we have sine beta, cosine beta, and uh, sine alpha, cosine alpha. We can find that uh, sine alpha plus beta, because this one is alpha, this one is uh, this one is alpha, this one is beta, equals sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. <clears throat> Let's insert our um, values in it. First one is negative nine over 40, 41, and cosine beta, that's, eight over 17 plus cosine alpha. Cosine alpha is 40 over 41. And uh, uh, the sine beta, 
next slide. Beta is 15 over 17. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Can I do some um, mm, reduction? No. Uh, so just use calculator to find the value. So 41 times 17, that's the bottom is 697 and nine times eight, 72. And then here is also 41 times 17. That's 697 plus, plus 40 times 15. 40 times 15. That's 600. And the, the value of this 600 minus 72. That's 528 over 697. Can I reduce a little bit? I think that's the final answer. Okay, yeah, I think I have the calculator on my computer. Let's see. Uh, that's two, uh, five to eight over six, nine, seven. Okay, uh, let me see here. I can't minimize it. Okay, move it here. Oh, the calculator is here. Uh, okay, let's see. So I just want to see if five to eight over six, seven, uh, six, nine, seven uh, can be simplified. So we have five to eight oh, over, over six, nine, seven, six, nine, seven. Then I got decimals, and then I need to do math, and then hit enter. Oh, I can't reduce it. So mm, that's the final answer we are looking for. If you want to check your answer is correct, you can plug it in your um, expression here. You can plug in this in your calculator to, see, calculator to see the answer is correct. If, let's try. Mm, let's try what, I have really bad memory. Okay, let's see. Sign, sign, inverse tangent. Inverse tangent, you should click second, 10, um, that's negative, what? Negative nine over 40. Nine over 40. Close the parentheses. Um, plus uh, inverse cosine. Inverse cosine, click second cosine. That's inverse cosine. Uh, eight over 17, eight over 17. Close the parentheses. Be careful. You must click click parentheses again because at the beginning you have the parentheses. I think because here, look, look at here. There is the parentheses. So at the end, you must have another another one to click it to close it. Okay, let's try new. Just a hit enter. Okay, I got this. And I want to convert it to the fractions. So hit math, fraction, and enter. Okay, I got the same answer. Okay, be more careful when you computing your um, computing your expressions, because if you made a mistake, you won't get the right answer. All right, let's move on. This is, this is a long question. Okay, second part, apply the sum and difference between oh, formula for tangent. Uh, tangent to u plus v equals tangent u plus tangent v divided by one minus tangent u tangent v. 
and tangent u minus v equals tangent u minus tangent v divided by one plus tangent u tangent v. Let's see, find exact value for tangent two five five degrees. For this one, when I see the big ang angles, I don't like them. I'd like to use the uh, period uh, uh, rules to to make it make it into a smaller angle. Do you still remember that tangents period is pi or one eighty degrees? That means if this angle minus one eighty degrees, the the function here still get the same value uh, of tangent two five five degrees. Yes. So let's do it. Tangent tangent uh, two five five degrees minus one eighty degrees. So let's make it easier. Smaller angle for us is easy to compute. That tangent uh, that's um, so two five five minus one eighty is that seventy five? Uh, I hope so. Um, and uh, then I have learned that tangent uh, 75 degrees equals 45 degrees plus 30 degrees. So these two angles, we like it really much because they are special. Okay, so we use the formula of tangent, tangent, uh, 45 degrees plus tangent 30 degrees divided by one minus tangent 45 degrees times tangent 30 degrees. So plug in the value of these uh, tangent functions. So tangent 45 is one plus tangent 30 is square root of three over three. 1 minus tangent 45, 1 times tangent uh, square root of 3 over, oh, tangent 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 3. And then simplify the bottom and the up top. Okay. So the top, I can sum up the two terms, they need to have the same denominator. So the one can be three over three. That means three plus square root of three. And then the bottom one is three, three minus square root of three. If I want to move this to the top, I need to use this term times the reciprocal of this. That means keep the first, the top uh, numerator here, three plus three, oh, square root of three, over three, multiply by the reciprocal of this. That means three on the top, three minus square root of three and on the bottom. I got this, that's three plus square root of three over three minus square root of three. I need to make, uh, uh, simplify this one because the bottom has the square root so use the conjugate of the bottom. What's the meaning of conjugate? So a, uh, a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared. So the bottom one, the conjugate of three minus square root of three is three plus square root of three. That means I can multiply by bottom by three plus square root of three. And also the top need to multiply by three plus square root of three. Okay, let's move it to this part. So the bottom one is three minus square root of three times three plus square root of three. And the top is three plus square root of three squared. Then the bottom one by this formula, I got three squared minus square root of three squared, step by step, three plus square root of three squared. 
So the bottom one, this one is nine minus three. Three minus square three or plus square. And then bottom one is six. And then actually I can, I can uh, just to compute the value of this. Okay, erase this because I want it to be reduced form. So let's see what's this. So three plus square root of three squared, that's nine plus two times three times square root of three, that's six times square root of three. And then plus square root of three squared is three. And then the top is nine plus three is 12. 12 plus six square root of three. The bottom one is six, right? And then 12 divided by six is two. Six divided by six is one. That's two plus square root of three. This is a final answer for, uh, for tangent to 205. Of 55 degrees. Uh, let's move on to see number three, use sum and difference formula to verify identities. That means it prove left hand side equals right hand side or right hand side equals left hand side. Okay, these uh, co function identities we have learned in chapter five. So let's see, sine theta equals cosine pi over two, half pi, minus theta. So that means sine, um, sine 30 degrees equals cosine 60 degrees. Because sine and cosine, they are co-functions. They have these uh, rules, these properties. And tangent, cotangent, they are uh, co-functions. So tangent theta equals half pi minus theta. Second theta is the co function of cosecant. So it's co, co oh, sorry. So second theta equals cosecant half pi minus theta. And the uh, period uh, properties here, if plus two pi, it still gets the same things for sine, cosine, second, co, uh, cosecant, and second. But tangent, cotangent, the period, they are pi. So tangent theta plus pi equals tangent theta. Okay, let's use these identities to find the answer to, find, to solve the problems. Sorry. I can't breathe. Verify the cofunction identities, sine. Uh, pi over two uh, minus theta equals cosine theta. Let's prove this identity is true. So like, I like to prove left-hand side equals right-hand side. Left-hand side is sine uh, half pi minus theta. And we have learned the sine formulas, the sine pi, a half pi, sorry, times cosine theta minus uh, cosine half pi times sine theta. And then what is a sine uh, pi over two? That's one, right? So some students got, got confused. You can use uh, the, what is this? This is the unit circle. So, um, one times cosine theta 
minus cosine pi over two. So cosine pi over two here, cosine value is zero. That's zero times sine theta. Is that correct? Yes. So zero times everything is zero. That means cosine theta. That means left hand side equals right hand side. That means therefore sine half pi minus theta equals cosine theta. We proved the identities. Let's move on. Uh, I hope this is the last one. Yes, because this video is very long. Okay, let's see, verify the identity. So this one equals to this one. So I'd like to start from the right hand side. Oh, sorry, left hand side. Let's see the left hand side. I need a big parenthesis to contain them. Bracket. Cosine x times cosine y minus sine x um, sine y. Actually, I don't need to use these brackets at the beginning, just the parentheses. And then multiply by this. This is cosine x cosine y plus sine x sine y. Mm. And then open the parentheses. This, this term times this term, this term times this term. Uh, these are all the algebra uh, knowledge. So cosine x uh, co times cosine y times this. It's cosine x um, cosine x times cosine y. Do you think this one and this one, they are the same? Yes, so I can square it. Oh, I see one thing. So this one minus this one, this one plus this one. So this two, they look exactly the same. The, these two, they look exactly the same. Is that the A minus B times A plus B? Is that a squared minus b squared? Okay, that means this term minus sine x sine y squared. But look on the right hand side, it's cosine squared x and the sine squared y. It doesn't have cosine y or sine x. I must convert this into cosine or sine. Oh, sorry. Convert this to cosine x or, oh, sorry. Convert this to cosine, oh, sorry, what I'm talking about. So convert this to sine y, because they're all y. Cos convert this to sine y, and convert this to cosine x. How to do it? So just to put it to the square here. So cosine squared x squared times cosine y squared minus sine x squared times sine y squared. I need to make this one to the sine y. Do you still remember sine x squared? That means I can convert it to the sine y. That means cosine squared x. Because in the right hand side, it doesn't have some terms. So I need to let them disappear. So by using the 
uh, a Pythagorean identities, we can make it disappear. So this term equals one minus sine y squared minus, I want this one disappeared because here it doesn't have that. Really? More correct? Yes. So here it doesn't have the sine x term. That means I want this one disappear. That means convert this into one minus cosine x squared, then times y squared, and then distribute it equals cosine squared x minus cosine x squared times sine y squared minus, be careful, here is minus. I can use parentheses and then do the distribution first and then open the parentheses. Distribute this term. That's sine y squared. Be careful here. Okay, and then minus cosine x squared times sine y squared. And then uh, open the parentheses. Bring down cosine x squared minus cosine x squared sine y squared minus sine y squared plus because plus, uh, minus minus is plus cosine x squared times sine y squared. This one, this one canceled out. I got cosine x squared minus sine y squared. So let's go back to see the question. Cosine x squared minus sine y squared. That means right-hand side equals left-hand side. So left-hand side equals right-hand side. So we proved it, it's verified. Uh, that's the last question of chapter 6.2. If you have any question, please contact me. Okay, have a good day.